Hi local heroes, welcome back on Local Wisdom. As we all know, Indonesia famous for thousands of customs and spiritual tradition that are owned by every tribe scattered throughout the archipelago. Customs and spiritual traditions are elements that are inseparable from Indonesia. Many customs and spiritual traditions that teach the meaning of harmony between human life and nature as well as human with other humans. Local heroes, all of these things are made up of three elements, the material, behavior, and individual or group spiritual values. All three are interrelated and inseparable. Now this episode of Local Wisdom will provide information for all local heroes on some types of spiritual ones from Indonesia that have meaning in life, of course, in our favorite program, Local Wisdom Local heroes, customs, and spiritual traditions are a medium for passing on the noble value of an ethnic groups to future generations. Many of these customs cannot be separated from the existence of musical instruments and the music that accompanies them. Even in some traditions, Musicals, instruments, and music have become a staple part of the ritual and tradition. In Indonesia, there are also many musical instruments that are part of a spiritual tradition or religious ceremony. In this first segment, Local Wisdom will present information on some of these musical instruments. Here they are. We start our journey in this episode to the city of Purworejo. There is Peduk or traditional drum that is famous throughout Indonesia. This Peduk is famous for its old age and super large size. This Peduk which is known as the Kiai Bagelan Peduk is almost two centuries old and this Peduk was made on order from the first region of Purworejo Regency. Raden Chokronegoro the first. This Kiai Bagelan Baduk plays an important role in spreading Islam in the city of Purwarejo. This Baduk was made at the same time as the construction of the Great Mosque of Purwarejo, which was called Bagelan. From Purwarejo, we drove to the capital city of Jakarta. It turns out that Jakarta has one of the rare musical instruments in Indonesia, namely the pipe organ, which by a well-known composer, Mozart, is called the king of instrument. You can find one of the oldest pipe organs in Indonesia at Emmanuel Church, Jakarta. The existence of the pipe organ here is one of the attractions for Protestant Christians to worship at GPIB in Manuel. Local heroes, this pipe organ, which is only produced as many as three pieces worldwide, has its own uniqueness. From the three pipes organ that are being produced, now only two pieces work. One is owned by GPIB in Manuel. So heroes, if you have time to come here and take a closer look, you can see that some of the writings on the pipe organ are still in Dutch. All of them are treated and maintained to this day. Okay, local heroes, now we fly to Sika district, East Nusa Tenggara. Here we can listen to the strain of the webs of ethnic instruments from Sika, the winning Saur Gang. This traditional musical instrument performed by strike is played when there are traditional rituals and traditional ceremonies. But as the time progresses, this music instrument can be played in events or competition in the region. Even now, it is almost played in every government ceremonial events in Sika. Local heroes. The warning Saur Gong is actually the name of three musical instruments that are played simultaneously, which are Gong, Waning, and Saur. I'm sure you know well about Gong. Meanwhile, Waning is a musical instrument like a drum made of coconut stems and cow or goat skin. And the last one is Saur. 
Saur is made of pieces of bamboo about one and a half meters long. Saur serve to control the rhythm of gongwani. Local heroes, let's move on to traditional Indonesian musical instruments that have been recognized for the beauty of the sounds. All these musical instruments in foreign countries. Local heroes must also be familiar with these instruments. Yes, this is kolintang. In ancient times, kolintang music was used for ritual and customary ceremonies related to the worship of ancestral spirits. But over the time, kolintang music is now more functioned as a dance accompaniment, song accompaniment, or even musical performance. Kolintang initially only consisted of a few pieces of food placed in a row on top of the player's legs. Sitting with both legs strike up front. From time to time, the use of players feet as a support. They placed with two banana trees. Meanwhile, the grids for resonator has only been used since the arrival of Prince Diponegoro when he was exiled to Minahasa in 1830. The next traditional musical instrument is Nafiri. Nafiri is a traditional musical instrument originating from Riau province, which the shape is similar to a trumpet. Uniquely, Nafiri is used not only as a musical instrument, but also as a communication tool for the Malay community in Riau, especially to inform the occurrence of a disaster, death announcement, and war. In the old Malay Kingdom era, Nafiri is one of the heirloom instruments used in the coronation of kings, along with the drums, battle, and choga which is used as spiritual power and royal honor. Without all the above condition, the coronation of the king is considered invalid. The person who is able to play Nafiri must meet special criteria. A strong lungs, healthy, and can perform special playing techniques so that they don't lose their breath. The Riau Malay community has continuously passed down the Nafiri making and playing technique from generation to generation to preserve the culture. And of course, heroes, as the younger generation, we must take an active part to preserve it. Hello, local heroes. Are you joining us in local wisdom? Local heroes, besides having a varieties of unique traditional musical instruments, of course, Indonesia is also rich in dance inherited from our ancestors that are still preserved to this day. Music and dance seems inseparable from the many activities and daily activities of our society. Well, local heroes, this segment of local wisdom will present several dances that have spiritual meanings, which, of course, only exist in Indonesia. Local heroes, for the first, there is an original dance from Ternate, Northern Maluku, called the Salajin dance. According to history, before the people of Ternate knew Islam brought by spice traders from Sumatra and Java. The people here adhere to animism and dynamism beliefs. In the beginning, the Salai Jin dance was only allowed to be performed by certain people, such as shamans or magical people. However, over the time, this dance underwent modifications, so that now it has to become a leading tourism attraction in Ternate. In ancient times, when the dance was performed, there would be burn incense, which is the ritual of the dance. But nowadays, the use of frank incense is rarely found and is starting to be replaced with charcoal from coconut shells. Not only that, the dance costumes also have changed following the latest trend 
by applying striking colors to make them more attractive for the tourist. Surely, all of you local heroes are familiar with the island of Bali, a beautiful island with hundreds of cultures and spiritual traditions that enliven every corner. One of them is the Sanghyang Jaran Dance. The Sanghyang Jaran Dance come from Nusa Lembonga, which is located in Kungkung District, Palinus. This dance is very secret by the local community. Based on record of palm leaves, located in the village of Pekraman, Jungut Batu. Sahyang Jaran Dance has been performed since 1894. At the time, Lambungan was known as the shelter of outcasts for outcasts from the kingdom in Bali. Sanghyang Jaran Dance in Nusa Lembongan is slightly different from similar dances in other areas of Bali. This dance doesn't use dynamic gamelan like Balinese dances in general, and when the dancers are performing this dance, they are accompanied by beautiful chanting of songs. The faster the tempo of the song, the faster the movement of the dancers. They will adjust to the strains of the song being sung. During performances, the dancers ride a hose-like property completed with bells on their feet. They will dance with their eyes closed like people in a trance over burning coconut fiber. Local heroes, now we are back again to the Riau province. In Riau, to be precise, in the district of Indragiri, Hilir, there is a traditional dance originating from the Talang Mama tribe called the Rentak Bulian Dance. This Rentak Bulian Dance has three conditions which should be fulfilled by the dancers. The Talang Mama community believes that if the requirements are not met, it can cause harm to the dancers. Before dancing, all dancers must get permission from the elders, and then their bodies should be smoked with agar wood. When the dance reaches its peak, usually the male dancer will be in a semi-conceal state, and then they will break the mayang betel nut as a healing medium, then scream and walk around the female dancers. Next, still in Sumatra, we'll cross a little from the west coast to the Mentawai Island, West Sumatra. Mentawai tribal people really appreciate the natural surroundings, so their culture has a lot to do with the nature. One of them is the form of a dance having strong ties to the nature, the Turuk Langai dance. The movements in this dance are inspired by the movements of animals they encounter while hunting in the forest. Indeed, since ancient times, the majority of the people of the Mentawai tribe depend on hunting in the forest instead of being fishermen in the sea. Turuk Langai dance is a form of entertainment for supernatural spirits, hoping that the spirit doesn't leave the body of the sick people. Mentawai tribe used to believe that if a supernatural spirit leaves the body of the sick people, then they will die. This dance also means a transmitter of noble values for all people, such as unity, prosperity, love, and peace between tribes. Hmm, so unique, right? Veranda of Mecca that's the name for a province that is famous for its people's obedience to Islamic law. Of course, all of you heroes already know, right? Yes, Aceh. In this skyline, there is also a dance that is very famous around the world. They call it Salmon Dance. The Salmon Dance comes from the Kayo Highlands, located in Southeast Aceh. This dance is believed to have been created by a great Achehna's cleric name, Sheikh Sama. 
Around the 14th century AD, this dance was used as a medium for Islamic taqwa by the scholars and initially. The salmon dance was only played by male dancers. Currently, salmon dance has been recognized as an intangible cultural heritage of the Gayo tribe that must be preserved. The uniqueness and harmonization of the dancer movements becomes a charmer that amazes every eye who witnesses the salmon dance performance. Salmon dance movement can describe how an individual must have good manner. This can be here from the San Putri. To honor those who have taken the time to attend and watch their performance. Well, heroes, the variety of traditional dance arts in Indonesia has their own characteristics and uniqueness. Traditional dance has become a culture for certain ethnicities and has become an identity that is able to unite the community. So, local heroes, don't go anywhere. Next segment, of course, there will be more exciting information. Stay with us on Local, Local Wisdom. Wisdom. Local heroes, we're back again. I'll still our favorite program, Local, local Wisdom. Wisdom. Now, all you local heroes certainly know that Indonesian has thousands of tribes spread from Sabang to Merauke. Of course, each of these tribes has unique customs and cultures. According to values that they adhere to, now, in this segment, Local Wisdom will share information about the unique and interesting traditional ceremonies and rituals of the tribes in Indonesia. For the first information, we go to North Sumatra, local heroes. Surely, you already know what tribes are here, right? Yes, indeed. Bata tribe. Well, some people belong to this tribe still adhere to the belief of their ancestor, which is called Malim. And those who are adhere Malim are referred to Parmalim community. Malim is a form of genuine spiritual religiosity of Bata community, which is embedded in the rituals of the life of the people. One of Malim traditions carried out by its adherents is Sipaha Lima. The Sipaha Lima ceremony is carried out once a year. In the fifth month, according to the Bata community calendar, the ceremony is usually held at Bali Pasogit, Hutatinggi Village, Laguboti District, Toba Samosi Regency, North Sumatra. This place is the center of Malim believers. Even the Par Malim people often call Bali's Pasogit as Huta Nabadia or Holy Land for them. Sipahalima is usually accompanied by music from Ogung Sabangun, the traditional Toba Batak musical instrument, as well as the Saha Daton dance when carrying offerings for the creator. Local heroes, of course, already know that one of the large tribes in Indonesia and also has cultural diversity is Japanese. Japanese tribe society has a strong mystical beliefs and also believes in the spiritual world, which is often called Kejawe. And one of the ceremonies or ritual watch is done to fight the bad effect caused by human error in Japanese society is called Ruatan. In Japanese spiritual culture, Ruatan aims to ask wholeheartedly for a safety and salvation. Ruatan was originally found in ancient Japanese stories which mostly contain self-purification rituals. One thing that cannot be separated from this ceremony is the shadow puppet performance. 
The people of Lama Holot Flores, East Nusa Tenggara, believe that it is a failure if there is a rift in mankind's relationship with God, mankind itself, and the universe. To restore the balance, they will hold a ritual called Tuno Manuk. This ritual begins with each meal, member of the Lama Holo tribe, offering a rooster as a symbol of the sky god. These chickens will be offered in traditional house called Korke, which is in accordance with the Lama Holo beliefs. That is where God resides, and what God wants will be signaled through the spirit of the ancestors. In a true dreams or direct vision, the Lama Holo tribe people believes. Aceh, or the Veranda of Mecca, has many traditions as a result of the cultural assimilation between its culture and Islam when it was first spread in Aceh. One of them is the traditional Pesijuk ceremony. This ceremony is an expression of gratitude to God Almighty and is carried out by ones having succeeded in obtaining something they expected. The Pesijuk ceremony is led by a local religious leader to read prayers of safety and well-being to God Almighty. Pesijuk itself comes from the Achenas language which mean to cool or cool. In conducting procedure, there are three main things, tools and materials, movement and prayers. For Aceh people, each of these has a special philosophy and meaning. From the tip of Sumatra, we will now head to the island of Sulawesi, to be precise in Tanah Toraja, South Sulawesi province. Tanah Toraja has many unique cultures and traditions and one of the most famous is the walking corpse tradition. This walking corpse tradition is held in a traditional ceremony called Manene. The indigenous people of Tanah Toraja believe if the Manene ritual is carried out before harvest time, then the fields, their fields and fields will be demated by the sudden abundance of rats and caterpillars. Manene tradition is closely related to the life concept of Toraja people. They believe that their sacred ancestor came from heaven and earth. So it's not right if their corpses are buried to the ground. Burying dead bodies to the ground will destroy the earth's purity, resulting in fertile earth. Local hero's spiritual custom is a word to describe human action that is associated with certain rituals in the management of the soul, which of course will very much depend on the environment in which the human life. This is what causes the diversity of spiritual custom that exists in Indonesia. Because of that, we should understand each of these differences and remain bound by the motto Bineka Tunggal Ika. After all, heroes, Indonesia without Bineka Tunggal Ika will be a chaos in the life of the nation. They would only care of themselves or their group and neglect the common interest. We must also remember that uniting this nation was an uphill struggle. Local heroes, this episode is finally over and we have to leave immediately. See you in the next episode only on Local, Local Wisdom. Wisdom.